Hi, my name's Johnny, and finally, today, we are checking out the brand new P5 from Sire. I can't believe I'm sat here recording this video right now because it feels like it's been an absolute age since these basses first entered my brain. And that was back in February of 2021, I think it was, when they, these were first announced and I quickly jumped on the pre-order of both the Sire D5 and the P5. So these are both P basses completely passive P basses from Sire, which is completely new. So I was so excited to check these out. So if you are new around here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for weekly content all about that bass. So if you're watching this video, you probably know a little bit about Sire. Relatively new company, pretty fresh on the city. I say pretty fresh, you know, they've been around for a, a long time now, but relative speaking to the rest of the market, they're pretty fresh on the scene and they have taken the bass world specifically by storm, offering that amazing balance between quality, price, value for money. They're often putting household names like Squire to shame or forcing them to kind of up their game a little bit when Sire offering just as good, if not better, guitars, all still made in Indonesia. Click the link in the description to go and check out more about Sire and find out more in-depth specs on this bass. I'm not going to go too spec heavy about this. I feel like you could just, you got eyes, you can read that online. If you don't have eyes, I'm really sorry. Anyway, let's actually talk about the P5. This bass comes in at around £400, or that's what it was when I pre-ordered it. I actually think it's gone down a little bit since then, about the 385 mark from Anderton's anyway, where I got this from. Like always, we'll start at the top, and we'll make our way down, shall we? We can't go any further without talking about one of the main things about this bass, and just look at that neck. It's insane. Really heavily roasted maple offering on the P5, and it is just stunning. I saw some pictures online where the headstock looked a bit darker than the fretboard, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be nice and even or nice and dark, because, you know, different roasted maple necks come out differently. I know Sterling don't really roast it as long, so it's not as dark, but Sire seemed to just put them in the oven and just leave them on. They've done a fantastic job with this neck. Starting up with the headstock, we've got your classic sire shape. I don't normally like the sire headstocks too much. They look a bit like a boat oar, I think. But I think they've done a good job with this one. I, I've not really gotten that oppression. Oppression? Gosh, that went dark. I haven't really got that impression with this headstock. I've not really looked at it and gone, mm, actually, no, I don't really like that. The machine heads are pretty good, and I don't, wouldn't describe them as anywhere near cheap. I'd say they're similar to like a Mexican Fender, a bit better than a Squire Classic Vibe. Vibe. <laughs> Bear in mind, this is a £400 base, and we're getting some really, really premium features on there. Not just roasted maple neck, we've got a satin finish on the back, rolled fretboard edges and a glossy finish on the front of the fretboard. Ultimate combination, I think. It is amazing. One of the best feeling necks for this price range I've ever played. I, help, I prefer this neck to the American Standard P Bass. It feels so comfy as well, not just in the speed that you can get up and down the neck. It has enough girth for you to get your hands around. 
It just feels super, super solid. Moving up to our body, we've got a North American older body, which older, maple, great combinations we've got here, really classic. They say on their website that it gives it a bit more of a mid-range punch, which is what you want out of a P-Base at the end of the day. Now the body on this one that I've got is the mild green and there ain't nothing mild about it. It is screaming in your face. In pictures online, it looks so different, I think. And in different lights, it looks different. It looks almost blue in some places. When I first pre-ordered this, I kind of ummed and ahed for a long time about which color to get because they're all really cool and quite unique. You've got your almost like a tobacco sunburst, a Dakota red looking one, and then this mild green. And I pre-ordered this one and then I was like, ah, do I want the red one after seeing Low End Lobster's review? And then I, I just, I stuck to my guns with the mild green and I do not regret it. It is insane. The tortoiseshell pit guard on here looks really, really classy. For a long time when I was looking this up online, I was considering getting a custom black one made because I think that that could still look pretty cool. But when I got it in person, I kind of just vibe with the tortoiseshell to be honest. And let me know in a comment down below if you'd like to see a black one on there. I'm sure people out there will do that mod, but I am interested to see what it looks like, but I'd have to get it custom made because there is a little cutout in there for you to access the truss rod at the bottom of the neck, which is another really premium feature that you don't really get on Indonesian made bases. Flipping this base over on the back, another really premium feature that you do not really get in this price range is that there is the option to string through the body. So the knobs on this base feel amazing. And the same goes with the input. I find that these elements are often the soonest ones to show how affordable a guitar is or it's the telltale signs that they start getting loose quite quickly or the input feels feels a bit dodgy, it feels a bit cheap. Those are the kind of the elements that I expect to maybe not be quite as good. Zero issues here, I love it, <laughs> it feels great. We've got a standard vintage style bridge, which, you know, it's, it's fine. One thing that I wish that they did do on this base is have the brass saddles. That is on the bridge on the D5, which is hanging up behind me. So I don't know why they didn't put it on the P5. Maybe they're going for something more modern here. The D5 is obviously more vintage inspired. So maybe they wanted to separate them a little bit like that. But I would have liked to have seen that bridge on this base. So let's not delay any further and let's have a listen to what this pickup can do. All of the sounds you're going to be hearing are recorded through the Line 6 HX Stomp using the Ampeg SVT4 Pro head with a really flat EQ, all going through the matching SVT 8x10 cab sim.
So I think this thing sounds pretty good. In terms of tonal diversity, it's a P-Bass thing. It does what it says on the tin, and that is what I look for in a P-Bass. I, I just want it to sound like a P-Bass, and this does. I absolutely love the no-nonsense nature of a P-Bass. That's its sound. Here it is, tonal no tone. When a bass is so limited, I think it's just got so much more character that it's got its own sound, you know? And it's got its own feeling. And I think the combination of the neck with the sound, it just perfectly marries up in this bass. And honestly, I don't know if I really have anything bad to say. Out of the box as well, this thing came set up amazingly well. The only real niggle I have is about the bridge and wishing it had those brass saddles. But apart from that, I, this channel is getting really boring because there's been a lot of guitars that I've just really liked recently. I've seen a couple of reviews saying that there's it's lacking a little bit in low end. I see where they're coming from a little bit, but if I didn't already have that notion in my head, I don't think I would have noticed that. It's only when I've heard people saying that I've gone, oh, okay, you know, I'm expecting that on my way in. So I've only actually owned one Sire before, and it was the Sire M7. Dual humbucker, 18 volt bass with a preamp in there, and about a million knobs and switches on there. And honestly, that's what made me sell it in the end. I just, I hate twiddling so much and, and dealing with all of that. Although you can get some great, great sounds out of it and it played phenomenally well. I just didn't enjoy that. And so that's always been a bit of a gripe of mine with Sire, that you see these jazz basses. I've said it before, you see these jazz basses and the control plate goes on forever with like like six million different knobs on there. With these basses, it really seems like they've stripped back these basses and put the money that they would have done in the fancy electronics and stuff and, it, and put it into other areas of the bass, which just makes it sing. So, like I said, we have also got the D5 up on the wall behind me. I am going to be doing a review of that very soon, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and have the notification bell turned on so that you can get notified of when that review drops in a few weeks' time. Probably talk a little bit more about the, some of those comparisons when I review the D5 and when I've had a, a deeper look at it. Maybe that's what the D stands for. Deeper. But anyway, the P5, let me know in the comment down below what you think of it. Thank you so much to Sire for making this bass, for making these basses, and and I'm sorry for ridiculing you online for the slow delivery. I know it's not your fault, the world's been turned upside down. But yeah, was it worth the wait? I think so. I honestly think so. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.